All right. So、um, thank you for coming to my talk, writing successful personal statements for master applications. Well, first of all, I would like to clarify the word successful, because right now you're applying for the program. So perhaps what you have in mind is whether I can get into a master program. If I can get into a program, then the personal statement would be considered successful. But、um, in my opinion, I think the the more important thing in the whole process is eventually、uh, you want to get a job, right? You want to launch your career. So here, what I have in mind is、uh, whether or not、uh, you will be able to、um, succeed、uh, professionally in the long term, and to what extent the master degree program can actually help you. Okay, so I hope you can keep this in mind when you prepare for this、uh, personal statement. Again,、um, I, I'd like to first of all share with you my.、Um, well, I'd like to share with you my personal stories.、Um, I did my undergraduate degree in、um, the States, Washington University in St. Louis, and、um, then I taught English at Boston University of Science and Technology for two years. After these two years of teaching, I actually applied for a couple of different master programs, and、um, including I got、uh, offered to study at、um, Oxford, Cambridge, Columbia, and Warwick. Eventually, I decided to、uh, study at Oxford. But as you can see, the program is on comparative and international education,、uh, which is not about language teaching. So. In retrospect, I feel that it was not the best decision that I made because, as I said, you know, this is about comparative and international education. If I eventually、uh, work in the government or um, um, do th doing things、uh, related to education policies, then it's probably going to be a good program. But、uh, since I、uh, later I, I continued to teach English and、um, eventually I did my PhD in. English studies at CTU. So, I I think the 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 program that I I got the the degree I got from Oxford, the the kind of、uh, training I got, it's really not、uh, that useful or helpful、um, for my career development. So, I think this is a story that、um, we can all learn、um, lessons from. Basically, you have to be very very careful when you、uh, choose your master programs because it's very likely that. You will get admitted to some programs, not all the programs, and、um, and we have to make this, this distinction between the master program students, master students, because basically you're going to pay the tuition, right?、Um, so that makes you as a as a customer, as a consumer, which is going to be very different from the PhD students, because PhD students they get stipends, they don't have to pay tuitions, so they are basically employees. They are like a junior research assistants. Uh, working in the lab, all right. So, so there's a, a huge difference between these two categories, and we have to keep that in mind. And、um, um, do not just choose a school because it's it's famous,、uh, because you know famous university also want your money. It's it's kind of unfortunate、uh, these days that a lot of universities they think of master program is just、uh, a way to uh, uh, make money. Maybe that statement is a bit extreme, but、uh, Maybe we can put it this way:、uh, master program or master education usually is not the top priority、uh, for the universities. Okay, it's also not the top priority for the、uh, faculty members. Okay, they probably want to do well in the undergraduate teaching. They also want to train the PhD students well, but for master program, they don't necessarily put a lot of resources into it. <coughs> well, I'm not trying to say. It's not worth the while, but、um, I just want to remind you that it's very important to be more choosy and to be more careful when you、um, choose the program, so that you really、uh, get your money's、uh, worth. So again, you know, choose the programs based on your needs and your future career plan. And I do want to emphasize the importance to have a career plan when you choose the master program because. If you do not have a very clear career plan at the moment,、uh, you want to wait until you know after you finish your master program, then you can figure out what you want to do with your life or with your career. I think that might be too late because that's exactly what I did. You know, when I decided to go to Oxford to do that comparative international education, I have no idea. You know what that program would enable me to do, but then. 
you know, the, the only thing I have in mind is like maybe I can try something different. Maybe I, I don't necessarily want to continue、um, teaching English, but、um, I think it it would be much better if we can have a more sort of better plan for our career before we commit ourselves. To this master program because it's quite expensive actually. It's expensive in terms of tuition and also expensive in terms of the the, the time that you will you will spend on the program. Okay. So the next question that I do hope you can think about would be,、uh, what can you do if you do not、um, pursue this master program? Okay. So so we're looking at uh, the uh, other opportunities,、uh, the other options. This is the、uh, the classic.、Uh, Concept of opportunity cost, right? You all、um, know that. So let's brainstorm a little bit. I will suggest a few、uh, other options. Maybe after today's workshop, you change your mind.、Uh, you never know, right? Another option would be instead of doing a master program, you can try to apply and then do a PhD. Okay. And for tomorrow, we will have a workshop on PhD. If you haven't signed up, maybe you can. You can、uh, come tomorrow night, and we can talk about how to write a personal statement for PhD program. And um, um, you know, sometimes、um, people do not feel confident to do a PhD yet, so they want to do a master first. But I think for the US, if you only go to US for the PhD,、uh, usually the, the the school will give you some time to take more courses and to、um, just explore your interest before you commit yourself to.、Um, um, Do your research, and sometimes they even give you an option to walk away from the PhD program with a master degree. So, so just make sure that、uh, if you don't want to do PhD, you can you can you can、uh, leave, right? So, so I think uh, uh, if you you think PhD is a, a possibility, you should always try the a PhD program in, in the US. And another、uh, option, which maybe you, you didn't consider this, is actually to get a job in a famous company, in a, in a, in a good international company, because、um, most of the so-called good companies like HSBC or the big four、uh, auditing firms, they actually have pretty good in-house training program for their new colleagues, like management trainee program. And I think to spend one or two years in these kind of companies would probably Help you to become a much better, much well,、uh, better trained uh, uh, professional than to do a master degree. So, including actually, you can try to look into、uh, some universities like University in Hong Kong that、uh, hire the、uh, research assistants,、uh, full-time research assistants for、uh, one or two years. And and if you do an RA position, you will have the opportunity to do research. You get paid, and you work with. Uh, um, the professors、uh, who get funding to hire you. So I think this is another、uh, option. You you want to、uh, keep it open, and also perhaps if you want to stay in Hong Kong, you could also look into the, some part-time programs. This way you can you can study and at the same time you can get some、uh, work experience. I don't know whether you're interested in、uh, doing a. Pursuing a career in, in accounting or auditing. If you are not a an accounting major, I think you should still look into this possibility, especially if you've come from a quantitative or statistical background. Because a lot of people actually spend a few years in the auditing firms like、uh, Big Four、uh, before they、uh, go move on to do、uh, pursue a degree.、Uh, uh, A career in the、uh, um, iBank, an、uh, investment bank, or, or other financial、uh, companies. But it, even if you do not have an accounting degree, you can always just spend like、uh, half a year full time or one year part time to get a, a conversion program, and then you will be qualified to um, um, pers pursue the、uh, CPA to become a CPA in Hong Kong, and then you will be able to、uh, work in the、uh, big four, or, you know, to. To、uh, using the accounting、um, career as a stepping stone towards uh, uh, investment bank. Okay, so I think a, a lot a lot of people are not aware、uh, of the fact that actually the auditing firms, especially the big four auditing firms, they do not expect people to have an accounting degree. So so long as you、uh, have a good degree and you have、uh, good communication skills,、uh, they're interested.、Uh, especially if if you come from like quantitative background or Or、uh, engineering background, they may be even more interested in you. So, so always look into that option as well. Start up, there's always a possibility. Take a gap year, 
and uh, do something you find really interesting and um, um, useful. So basically, the bottom line here, the, the key message here is that it's very important to explore alternative paths in order to minimize the opportunity cost, right? So you want to make sure that you choose the best, highest valued options so that uh, whatever you give up is the uh, second uh, best valued, which is also the lowest for opportunity cost. Then maybe we can also try to answer this question more positively while pursuing a master degree. Maybe we can think of in this way, we have um, you right now, and you have your strength, you have your weaknesses, and you also presumably have a dream job, okay, a job that you want to you want to get, but you are not ready yet, okay, just like how just said, okay, not ready for your dream job. But the trouble is sometimes you don't know what is your dream job yet, okay, that that could be a a problem. But as I I'm, I'm trying to argue is that if you don't have a very clear idea what you want to do with your uh, professional career or what, or what you want to pursue in your career, you probably want to spend a bit more time trying to figure that out before you make your decision about your master uh, degree. Maybe you want to spend more time talking with people that you trust and try to have a better idea of about your career. Uh, but uh, I, I have to say this is actually very difficult. Okay, when I was your age, I have no idea. Okay, so so you don't have to feel too bad if you you have no idea at the moment. But uh, presumably three years later, hopefully you will be ready for your dream job. So you you have the you you right now, and then the you uh, three years later. There's a gap. Okay, there's a gap there. So hopefully the master program that um, you will um, apply and eventually get into, you pursue that program can bridge the gap. So the program will actually provide you the kind of training and skills that you need to to get uh, your dream job, to launch your career, and to become successful professionally. Hopefully, this is this is the story. Okay, this is the story you have in mind, and this is also the story that you want to tell in your uh, personal statement. You want to tell your readers that the reason why you want to pursue this master degree is because you have a pretty clear idea what you want to do after the master degree. And this particular degree program can help you to uh, uh, to be ready for for the kind of challenges that, that you have to face uh, when you um, graduate from the degree program and uh, to get a job that you want to uh, work on. So, in terms of the importance of uh, um, personal statements, in fact, if you look at all the literature, you look at um, what people have have to say about the personal statement. We don't really have a very clear idea how important is a, a, is a good personal statement because when we look at the application outcome, it is affected by many different uh, uh, factors. Probably your GPA is the most important factor, but also uh, in terms of your um, other experiences and sometimes even your, your nationality could be a, um, a factor because a lot of admission programs, they try to balance you know, the, the intake from different uh, um, geographical regions. So anyway, we don't know how important is a good personal statement, but one thing we do know is that if you write a bad personal statement, that's going to hurt you. So you want to make sure that you don't write a bad or poorly written personal statement. So hopefully through today's workshop, at least you, you can avoid that. But more importantly, I want to point out that actually writing a personal statement should be a very useful and valuable experience in its own right. Okay, not necessarily for you know complete uh, um, you know meeting the requirement for the application. It's actually a very good uh, opportunity for you to reflect on your education that you have received at undergraduate level, and also in terms of how you want to plan your career. This is going to be an opportunity because when you write something down, you have to think through it very clearly in order to, to, to write it out. Okay, So, so I do hope that uh, this piece of document, in the process of writing this personal statement, you will have the opportunity to, to do some soul searching, to think about you know, uh, um, what you want to become uh, in, the, in the next three to five years. And also, ho hopefully, you can keep this document okay, and revisit it, read it again uh, a year later, two years later. And hopefully you can you can track your your progress and remind yourself uh, what is your goal and what is your plan. So this is uh, there's this thing called the uh, this quote you know begin with the end in mind. So so I think this this is very very useful uh, advice. It's actually from a very famous book. It's called Seven Habits of Highly Effective uh, Person People. Have you heard of that book? 
But one of the habits for highly effective people is to begin with the end in mind. Okay, I think this this quote, this this advice is very uh, relevant here because when you apply for the master program, you want to think about you know what are you going to do, or what will happen when you graduate from the master program, and uh, when you walk into the interview room, you know face the selection panel, how are you going to talk about yourself and um. Uh, to what extent you are you are well prepared and well trained for the job that you want to um, you want to apply. Okay. A more specific uh, advice I want to give you when you uh, apply for the master program is you want to do your homework, do your homework and research the program so roughly. Right. It will probably take uh, quite a bit of time. So which is why I I, I think you probably want to limit the number of uh, program that you want to. Apply a lot. I know a lot of people, um, Chinese students, they tend to apply like 15 to 20 programs. I think that number is too 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 big. Okay, so uh, I think maybe we think 10 would be more reasonable. Uh, instead of applying too many programs, you want to sort of just look into the program more deeply and and uh, uh, look through the the um, official websites and and also try to. Uh, get more information from different sources. And specifically, these are the, some of the items you want to look. At. The first one is obviously the uh, writing instructions for for the personal statement. Sometimes they call it uh, a statement of purposes. Well, because you know, personal statement as a genre is is quite more or less is the, is the same. You know, the readers would have pretty similar expectations. So the writing instructions from different master program. Uh, are also not that different, but I think it's still very important to read the writing instructions from different programs very carefully, and then write the personal statement based on that writing instructions. So you don't want to just write one piece of uh, um, personal statement and submit to different uh, programs. Okay, so so you you have to read the writing instructions very carefully, and also for the follow-up tutorial. If you want to submit me, uh, give me your outline for feedback, or uh, later on give me the full text uh, draft for, for for feedback. You should also um, send me the writing instruction. Okay, I will look at that and and then read your um, outline of full, uh, full text essay. And increasingly, I think a lot of uh, programs nowadays they would also list the intended learning outcomes. Sometimes it, it's not necessarily a very sort of concrete words or concrete things, but uh, I think you should still look into this uh, intended learning outcomes and see whether or not uh, this outcome would match your needs, match your career plan. And maybe you want to refer to these outcomes in your personal statement as well. Student profiles is also quite important. Again, you can go to the websites and, and sometimes they will give, give uh, this kind of uh, uh, information. I think you, you should be more cautious if you find that actually 40% or 50% uh, of the student body uh, is from China. That might be a concern because uh, when you go to the States or, uh, or any other English speaking universities, you don't want to spend most of the time like doing projects with, with uh, mainly speaking uh, um, friends, right? So, of course, there's some other uh, information, so you want to see whether you would fit in with that uh, student profiles. Size of enrollments is, is also um, something relevant along with admission rate. So actually, if you look at these two uh, pieces of information, you can somehow figure out the no-show rate. So you can see that actually even the, the top universities for the master program, they, they don't always, you know, they give out all the offers, but uh, not everyone will show up. So so that would be some information for you to, to uh, take into account as well. And then core and elective courses, okay? So uh, obviously that's important because uh, you have to um, look at um, the courses that you're going to take and you need to think about whether you have the uh, background um, to do well in these courses and also whether or not the, the courses provided by the training uh, by the master program actually can uh, uh, develop the skills that you need to develop right I think research backgrounds of the faculty members is also something you want to uh, think about master program is not a research degree in the sense that uh, when you do a research degree like an MPhil or a PhD, uh, you have to somehow do some kind of original research. 
but um, still, uh, I think a, a lot of master programs still expect the, the, the students to uh, do a, a master dissertation, which means you still have to do some kind of research um, project. Mm, uh, the only difference is that uh, probably it's going to be less uh, demanding in terms of you don't have to, to be uh, original. Okay, but you still have to apply the theory. You still have to collect the data and then to to do the analysis. Okay, so so maybe you want to look into the faculty members and see uh, if there's anyone who is doing something that you're interested. So that would be something to to consider as well. Again, thesis and or project requirement. You know, some master program would would uh, require you to do to write a thesis, and others may not. Okay, so so depending on your needs and and your your expectations, you can you can make a choice. Uh, internship opportunities is also very important. If the master program specifically state that they, they, they offer or arrange some kind of internship for their students, then you should probably um, consider that's a, a that's a plus because that will be very good for your um, uh, uh, further career development. Job placement of graduates, you don't necessarily always get the detailed information on this item, but Maybe you want to do a little bit more research and try to get a bit more information because that would somehow help you to predict how likely you will get a job, uh, get a placement uh, after you graduate. And, and finally, if you go to the United States, uh, in the U.S., they, they have something called OPT, which is Optional Practical Training. And I think most, pe most students can either get a 12 months or 18 months of OPT. Uh, I don't have the most updated information, so... Maybe you only look it up, but then there's something called STEM ex extension. So, if your program uh, is related to science, technology, engineering, or, or math, or I don't know, M is medicine, medicine or math. Anyway, uh, then you will have more months for OPT. So, so, so if if you um, do your research on on the math program, maybe you want to look into whether. Uh, it's eligible for for the STEM extension for OPD. That that's again a, a very very good thing because then you will have more opportunity to 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 um, work in the U.S. and get more work experience. All right. So again, the the key message here is that you want to do your homework and you want to collect as much information uh, about the program that you uh, you're going to apply. Okay, and then that will inform you to to make the right decisions, and also this will prepare you to write your personal statements. So the guiding questions uh, when you research the program include uh, what can I learn academically, and also what other non-academic learning opportunities can 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 I get. So these are the two key questions, and also you might want to think about whether you have the background, uh, you have the skills. To, uh, you are ready to, to benefit, um, fully benefit from the master program or will I do well in the master program. And in terms of the um, sources of information, the official website is obviously the most important source. And then you might also try to email the program secretary and director if you have any specific questions. You want to network with the current students and alumni and sometimes maybe you want to talk to the employers. Um, who probably know more about you know the, these different programs because they they will have to recruit um, graduates, and um, I would also strongly encourage you to do campus visit. Actually, I think you know if if you travel in the off you know off season, non peak season, the attic is not that expensive. So even flying to the uh, to the states, you know, it's not as expensive as you imagine. So. So perhaps you want to just uh, arrange some kind of campus visit. That would be very helpful because considering the, the, the money you would put in to commit yourself to, to um, that master program, I think uh, spend some time and money to do the campus visit uh, would be quite um, um, a worth a while. And also another possibility is you want to look into the conferences in the East Asia region and see whether or not uh, some of the uh, faculty members of the master program may, may show up in the conferences. If that's the case, you want to meet with them, you can go to that conference. Again, going to a conference is not that, not that expensive, so I think it's, um, it's uh, uh, an investment you want to consider. Okay? So, so this way you will get more information about the programs. And then I want to talk about you know, how you want to frame your personal statements how you organize your personal statement according to 
the writing instructions. I want to show you one writing instruction which is a little bit uh, um, unconventional. It's 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 a bit different from the the kind of writing instruction that that you usually would encounter. Uh, maybe you can take a quick look at uh, this um, instruction. Actually, this instruction is from UCLA Financial Engineering Master in Financial Engineering program. And for UCLA, if you only apply for this program, you have to write three essay, three essays. Okay, and this is the first one, which is basically ask you to talk about a project that you work on, and um, through the description of this project. Uh, you want to talk about your skills, problem solving skills, analytical skills, and then uh, uh, talk about why this project was interesting to you. Okay, so so hopefully uh, they want to get a better idea of who you are, your identity, your interests through this project. So let me uh, give you some hints or, or my suggestions on, on how you may want to um, um, write this um, essay. Um, first of all, it's very important when you write any essay is to think about the framework. So that that's something I, I I'll talk about all the time. You know, you need to have a good framework in order to write a good essay. And when you describe a project, I think this so-called IMRD framework is is very natural. It's it's very suitable. I'm not saying this is the only model, but this is the only framework. But but I think it's it's quite uh, suitable here. So basically, we adopt or we can adopt the introduction uh, IMRD model. So we start with an introduction, just like writing an academic paper, right? So uh, in the introduction, you want to give give out some background information about the project, um, and maybe uh, a little bit, you know, the purpose of the project, the goal of the project, and then explain a little bit of why this project is important, right? You want to justify the efforts of doing this project, and then the method section, you want to tell. Uh, the readers, you know, what tools and what um, theories you have applied, or whatever um, data you have collected, or what you have done, right? Basically, uh, for the method section, and then the result, what you have got, or if it's a practical project, what's the outcome? And then the discussion, you want to talk about your skills, you want to talk about the contribution, and um, you know, talk about how this project is related to your. Uh, education and development. So I think th this framework would be could be quite useful. And then, of course, uh, according to the writing instruction, you will need to identify some specific skills and um, um, some con concrete and quantitative supporting details. Okay, so um, the word quantitative here is very important because you want to give out some um, numbers. Okay, in order to support you know whatever points that you are trying to make. And the third point here is not mentioned in the writing instruction, but this is sort of uh, assumed because you're writing an essay uh, to apply for the program. So it's very important for you to relate whatever you're talking about here, especially the skills, um, to the program. Okay, so you want to convince the readers that you have developed the skills that would enable you to do well. In the program, but at the same time, the program would provide training for you to further develop the skills, and you will become more successful professionally. And then, one question that you might have in mind is, what if I have more than one project I want to talk about, right? Because here the essay says just talk about one project. But what if you have two projects or three projects that are all interesting? And valuable. My suggestion is that if you have space, you can you may want to relate some other project that you have done when you talk about this project that the, the main project you want to focus on because somehow you should be able to find some connections, right? So you can say, well, I get some inspiration from this project to to do this, uh, or there's some skills I develop in a different project that can actually. Uh, that actually helped me. Okay, so this way you may be able to mention some other projects that um, you, you you consider very important. Let's take a look at 
the second essay that UCLA asked the candidates to write. I think this essay question also somehow echo the point I made earlier, which is applying for a master program is all about career development. Okay, it's all about you know how the program can help you to do well in your in your professional career. So that is why this essay is about you know why do you find a career in quantitative finance ap appealing, and um, uh, why do you think this is the right career path for you? So I think this this essay question presu uh, presum presumably you know or we should say expect the candidates to have a pretty clear career plan. Okay, that sort of reinforced the point made, I made earlier is that you don't want to apply for the master program and wait until you, you study in the, uh, get an opportunity to study in the program to explore, to decide what you want to do with your, uh, with your career. You want to have a pretty clear idea what you want to do as soon as you can. So, well, I, I, I strike out this because this is kind of, uh, uh, this is a brutally honest answer uh, and um, uh, which is not very useful. So, what, what you need to do is again, you have to have a career path. So if you only write this essay, probably the first thing you want to do is to map out your career path. Quantitative finance, that's just a big field. Okay, specifically, what kind of career path you want to take. You, you have to you have to describe it right because when you describe a career path you, you show your readers that you have pretty good idea what you want to do you know I, I think most um, uh, admission committee members they want to uh, take in students that have a pretty good career plan right as you can see in this as a question so the reason why you choose this career path is because you have the talents and abilities to succeed in this career. And maybe here again, you know, they didn't ask you to talk about the program, but you want to talk about the program because you're writing a statement for the program, right? So, so you want to talk about the, the training at the, the master level, the training that you can get from the program can actually, you know, further enhance your skills and then you will be able to meet the challenge, the requirements for the career path. So the keyword is the matching. And the second keyword would be interest. You, you think this career path is, is uh, suitable, is the right career path for you, it's because it's interesting. Okay, you, you, you find it uh, interesting and rewarding. And here, I would encourage you to try to focus on a specific area within the profession. Um, for example, if you want to do uh, uh, um, finance, right? So there, there must be many different uh, specific areas within finance that you can you can consider. So when you write an essay like this to talk about the career path, to talk about your career plan, you want to be specific. You want to focus on a uh, specific area. Okay. For example, there's financing for climate change. Okay, so that will be that will be pretty uh, um, specific. If you want to do auditing, okay, uh, usually um, professional auditors nowadays they they focus on on specific industries. So industry would also be. Um, uh, a specific area for the auditing professions, and I I would also encourage you to to think big in terms of social responsibility and how your professional skills and how your career can make a difference uh, in a society. I think I think that would be quite an interesting question to to consider. So so that would be something to to think about as well. Okay, so, so it's not just about uh, uh, making money. It's not just about um, a personal gain. It's also about your your uh, your social responsibility. Okay. So that's the second essay question. The third essay question is actually an optional essay. Um, basically, it asks you to provide any other information you think would help us evaluate your potential to succeed in a program. I think. If you look at this word here, succeed in a program, I guess the word succeed has several meanings. And one of the meanings is that you want to convince your readers, the admission committee, that 
you can survive the program. Okay, actually, I I was talking with、um, when I was in Oxford, I was talking with the program leader, and he he said, you know, one of his nightmares is that students could not complete or graduate from the program. So, so I think this is the this is something that a lot of people have in mind. You know, you you take in the international students. Sometimes they come from EFL background, right? English as a second language or foreign language background. You want to make sure that they 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 can actually do well. Okay, so 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 I guess that that would be something you want to、uh, keep in mind. That is why if if your GPA or test scores were less than perfect, you may want to offer、uh, an explanation. Provided that that explanation is actually reasonable, so that's why I italicize it because it's kind of you have to be careful there. If you don't have a very good GPA or test score, you you can't expect this essay will make much difference, right? But again, you know some of the points that you can、um, cover here. You know it's it's a short essay, so、um, there's not much you can you can write about.、Uh, one thing you don't want to write about is your childhood stories. Or stories about、uh, your parents. The reason I I strike strike this out, but remind you, don't write this, is because based on my past experience working with、uh, a lot of students, people tend to write about this, you know,、uh, for whatever reasons. But don't don't write about this, okay? So basically, the message should enable the readers to better、um, evaluate your potential to to succeed, whatever that succeed means. You know, I, I just talk about succeed could mean at least. Survive, right? But it could also mean something else. So you have to try to attach some meaning to that. And maybe only talk about faculty members you'd like to work with. Again, you know, even even for master, you know, you're not going to do original research, but still you want to do some research. And also in terms of you know some of the courses or program features that can help you to achieve your career goals, you could also talk about that. But these are just some of the the suggestions I. I I offer here. You can also think more creatively and and come up with other points. And this is optional,、um, so so you, you can decide whether you want to write it or not. So let's take a, another example, and this one is from Master of Public Health at Yale. So please take a quick look at this. Writing instruction. I highlighted a, a few words here. Well, here it says, you know, the same purpose and object is one of the most important components.、Uh, it is your opportunity to make the case for why we should admit you. Well, people always claim that, but、um, in reality, how important it is, we don't know. But again, it says, tell us your public health story. So, in other words, because this is a program about. Public health. That's why you want to tell the story. It's your story, but at the same time, it has to be a public health story. So, in other words, if you are applying for a master of、uh, financial engineering or, or whatever discipline, you want to tell a story within a discipline instead of just talk about、uh, some general stories, right? Highlighting the formative experiences and how that experience have taught you and how they they are informing your decisions. Okay. Because they want to understand your decisions. Okay, that, that that's very important. Area of interest and public health question you wish to explore should be clear. Okay, so so I think this somehow highlight the reason why you want to do a master degree is you want to explore a question. Okay, you want to bring a question to to the master program. This is still an opportunity for you to study to explore a question. So maybe, in other words, we don't. Well, again, I, I want to emphasize、uh, the career-oriented nature of the program, but at the same time, let's not forget. Let's not forget that you know, master study, master program is also、uh, for you to satisfy your curiosity, to um, um, pursue some kind of advanced academic study. And then the, the the next point here is to know your plans for how you hope to use your degree. Okay, it's again, you know, after you graduate, what are you going to do? And finally, anything you can tell us about what you bring to the classroom. So that's another、uh, interesting point. So I think the, the 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 assumption here is that the educational experience 
does not only come from the faculty members. It's not like the teachers, you know, lecture. It's also about the students interact with one another and learn from one another. So in that sense, I think it's still quite important to get into a good university, a good program, because the important thing is that you, you will be able to uh, meet with some good, good students. So again, uh, some uh, key points to, to remind you. When you write that uh, statement of purpose, you only focus on the discipline. Okay? Here it says, tell us your public health story, not your childhood story. You only use a language that can reveal your professional identities. So choose the words carefully so that uh, the readers, when, when they read your statement, they can, they can uh, sense that, okay, this, this guy is actually well trained. They, they have the specialized vocabulary, specialized lexical resources to, to make a point, okay? To, it's like communicating with uh, uh, the experts, all right? So um, your readers are experts in your field. So, so, so do not explain some, uh, um, you know, just terms that uh, experts actually understand. Okay, you don't you don't have to explain those terms. Okay, you have to assume that um, your readers know a lot um, about the fields. And um, again, tell your story within the discipline. That means you want to talk about your research project. If it is a non-academic project, you have to be careful. It could still be relevant, right? But make sure it is related to the discipline. It's not just about, you know, some kind of random extracurricular activities that can highlight your leadership. Uh, if it's, it's internship, again, it has to be related to, to your discipline. If it's a part-time job or job experience, it has to be related to your discipline. And... Um, you want to sort of again in your statement you want to show that you have made an informed decision the decision to apply for this program has has been a, a rational one you have taken into account different information about yourself about your career plan and about the program itself um, I think you can refer back to the um, diagram I, I, I showed you earlier the, the you right now and the, the you three years later and you want to have a very clear idea of what area that you want to pursue and what research question you have in mind. Okay, even though this is not a research degree, you still have to do a research project. And also what you bring to the classroom, you only think about your strengths and your potential contributions. Here, I think you might want to relate to the courses. So you have to do your research, you have to do your homework to look at all the different courses. Maybe some courses that will be a good project, and this is where you will contribute. So uh, just to remind you that the diagram that I showed you earlier. So here are some of the questions. Regardless which program that you will apply, you can maybe keep these questions in mind and um, um, to guide your personal statement writing. So the first question, well, the first set of questions is, again, what is your career plan? What is your dream job? Um, why is it Why is it your dream job? And um, what do you expect yourself to be doing five or ten years from now? I can understand and also imagine it is quite difficult for you as a year three or year four students to answer these questions. But I think you should try. And uh, you don't want to try alone. You want to consult as many people as possible. Okay? Try to mobilize all the resources available to you, including the teachers at this university, including your parents, your family members, and your friends, anyone you can trust, anyone who has more experience than you. Because this is important, right? And um, it's important for you to figure out your career plan as um, soon as possible and also as clearly as possible. Again, I sort of have a sort of a bad experience and uh, I made a bad decision. So um, I think part of the reason why I'm doing this is to make sure that you don't make the same mistake that I did. 
And the second question is a second set of questions is, what are your strengths and weaknesses as a professional in your field? And how did the training and experience at this university shape your professional identity? So somehow you need to reflect on the courses and the training received here. And then how did the training prepare you for the challenges in the master program? So when we say the challenges in the master program, that means you will have to refer to the research, the homework you have done for the master programs. You have to figure out you know, the courses you need to take, you know, whatever you know, requirement for graduating from the master program. And there must be some kind of connection between your undergraduate work and your master program work. I think somehow this question is basically a reiteration of the, uh, the diagram that I showed you earlier. What skills and strengths do you need to further develop before you can land your dream job and launch a successful career? I think this question is basically referring back to that diagram and how would the master program help you develop such skills and, and strengths. This one thing you, you, you can think about is, is, you know, imagine you are the admission officer. Okay, so you have 15 slots for this program and you got 100 applicants. Okay, so, so which, which students you want to pick? I think one of the most important questions is, you know, who among these candidates can benefit most from the program? Right? So I think, I think that's the, the question people would ask. And, and here, if you can somehow show that you have a clear plan for your career and you have some good training from your undergraduate program and now you can benefit from this master program to develop these skills that will help you to succeed professionally, if you can make that story very clear in your personal statement, I think you will have a better chance. So for the personal statement, of course there are some other factors you cannot control like GPA or some other things, but at least you know you want to do a good job here, writing a good, uh, writing a personal statement. Again, the the the, the last question here, I put it uh, italicized because I think it's it's optional. You may or may not have the opportunity to talk about this in your personal statement, but this is something you want to think about. What do you value most in your life, and how your um, how can your professional development help you realize such value. But again, you know, I, I don't I don't think it's always appropriate to talk about this in the personal statement. It depends on what value you're talking about and uh, whether or not it's actually relevant to the program that you're applying. But but I think it's it's quite an important question to think about. So I just put it here for you to consider. All right, so what I'm going to do talk about now is basically a, sort of a sample outline, a suggestion on how you can uh, write your personal statement or statement of purposes. But one thing I want to remind you at the very beginning is that uh, uh, this is just a suggestion. You can consider this, but uh, you don't have to follow this, you know, completely. Uh, you should always take into account the writing instruction and also your personal situation to um, decide how you want to organize your personal statements. And this is why we want to do follow-up tutorials to give you feedback on your outline. It starts with an introductory paragraph. And when you write the introduction, you write the first few sentences uh, of your personal statement, you probably want to get some attention, right? You want to use the attention getter or gambit to make sure that the, the, the reader would, would uh, read, read on. But, um, you know, sometimes people sort of overkill it. Like, they, 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 they like to use famous quotes or try to impress uh, the readers with some kind of, you know, philosophical, uh, um, profound statements. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Because these people, you know, they, they read your statement, you know, you know they, they are the experts, okay? So, so you want to you want to talk about, you know, um, you know, why you want to apply for the program, right? You want to, you want to get straight to the point. So I would encourage you to 
to start with, you know, introduce your area of interest or the, the research question that you want to explore, right? Referring to uh, some of the right instruction we, we talked about earlier. And, and again, you don't want to talk about things like very big, you know, general problem facing humanity, blah, blah. You want to save the world. That's, that's not for the personal statement. And uh, instead, you want to discuss a very specific problem that your profession or you as a professional can help address. So, so, so try to consider some specific problem instead of a, the, the general or grand uh, um, problem. Whatever you decide, you, you, you want to write about these things that, that's related to to application. And then perhaps you want to end your, your introductory paragraph with a one sentence answer to the major questions in the writing instructions. Okay. Depending on the writing instructions, you want to read that writing instruction very carefully and identify the major questions that you need to answer and then answer them. And uh, here you, you, you can try to you know write a complex sentence, but then in that complex sentence you you want to sort of um, address all the the, the the main questions. Uh, among these questions, probably you want to talk about your skills and and your background and how how these skills and background match the program requirement. You talk about your re research interests and career plan. Maybe you talk about you know that you need this this training to pursue. A uh, specific career, and then the second paragraph. My uh, suggestion is you want to talk a bit about your undergraduate coursework, okay? Because that that's actually the sort of the main component of your undergraduate education. So so spend one paragraph talking about that is is not uh, uh, unreasonable. Again, you want to focus on your major discipline, right? To to look at um, the different courses that you have taken. And um, you want to highlight uh, how the courses could help you to succeed in the in the master program, right? Because in the master program, there you have to take different courses, and you need to have certain background in order to to do well in, in in the courses. So this is where you can connect your undergraduate education with the master program that you are you are applying. And um, perhaps you can also think about you know in terms of if there's any gap in your training, okay, so you, you have done your training at HKBU, and uh, I'm sure it's a good education, but uh, there must be some, some kind of gap uh, here and there. So perhaps th this is where the, the master program can, can fill the gap. And again, you want to emphasize the skills and uh, you have developed the knowledge you have acquired through the undergraduate uh, coursework. And hopefully, uh, I think the last, last thing is kind of uh, challenging, but I always encourage students to look at your undergraduate education as a whole, look at all these different courses and try to connect the dots and try to think about how it's, it's, it's a um, framework, how these different courses uh, are put together to sort of provide the training that you have received. Uh, and, and again, this can be related to the, to the master program. Okay, so that would be the, the second paragraph. Um, again, these are the suggestions, okay, uh, whether you want to cover um, all the points or in what order, it's, it's really up to you. And um, the third paragraph, um, you probably want to review your undergraduate project experiences. So that's going to be outside the, the coursework. Or maybe, I don't know about the, the, the courses that you, you take, if there's any courses that involve significant amount of uh, research or you know kind of independent study or project you can talk about that as well but the third paragraph is basically about research if there's other extracurricular activities that is related to your future study you might also um, talk about it and I think when you write the third paragraph you might want to think about that UCLA essay, which asks uh, asks the candidates to write about a project, right? So some of the points, um, the essay question asks asks uh, the the candidates to write about. You might want to take that into account and see whether you want to cover those points. So my suggestion is to focus on 
just one or two projects okay so we call the UCLA financial engineering essay and again similarly similar to my suggestion for the uh, UCLA essay you want to adopt an MRD model or, or any other organizing uh, framework that you you find uh, uh, appropriate and highlight the skill development and other learning experiences so the skills should be quite uh, clear you know especially if you go over the method section right so that would be you know the skills that you use and in terms of other learning experience that could be more um, diverse you know whether um, you learned you know this is how research works or there could be some other inspiration that you you get from the, the project okay so you have to be uh, a bit more uh, creative here but also in terms of reflecting on your own experience and um, you want to talk about how this kind of experience actually inspire you to further your studies so uh, sometimes it could be just one you know a little something from your earlier project experiences that actually motivate you to go further and to pursue a master degree okay if that's the case then you can talk about it uh, in your personal statement and again when you write these project experiences you should try to relate whatever you talk about here to the master program that you're applying you want to say okay perhaps you know as I said earlier this is why I want to do a master degree I want to further pursue or investigate this problem or you know this project experience has actually developed this skill which I can use in my master program so it's very important to keep the master program in mind and also relate to this master program from time to time when you write your personal statements and then the fourth paragraph is going to be uh, about your career plan and I think your career plan should be somewhat related to the previous two paragraphs right the, the kind of training coursework you have done and also the project experiences should somehow inform uh, your decisions you know uh, what kind of career you want to uh, pursue so you want to talk about your career interests your dream job you want to talk about how you have developed the interest in such a career perhaps you know the courses some courses that you took at this university or some of the projects you have done actually motivate you to to pursue this interest and um, what kind of skills and experiences that you need to implement such a career plan um, I think that's sort of the logical um, next step you know after you talk about your career plan what is your career plan then you can talk about what do you need uh, in order to to launch that career right so and once you identify your educational needs based on your career plan then you can you'll be ready to talk about the reasons why you want to choose the target uh, master program so um, here again it's, it's just one paragraph so so you have to pick and choose you know how you organize these different points but again these are some suggestions you want to talk about the specific courses okay again you have to do your homework you have to tailor made your your statements for different programs the specific courses that may strengthen you as a professional the faculty members that, that you would like to work with or your thesis any other learning opportunities that can help you to uh, accomplish your career goals for example if the master program offers internships then that internship could be a very important uh, stepping stone um, towards uh, a permanent job offer and actually I think the geographical locations of the university is, is also an important factor you know when I was a high school student I, I applied for different universities I didn't look at the, the cities at all so and I end up in Washington University in St. Louis you know St. Louis is like in the middle of nowhere <laughs> um, <laughs> so so it's like I was very naive at the time so but but if you go to the States make sure that you go to a, a city where there are industries there are companies and job offers okay um, that's actually quite important all right and and, and and also you know why you will be an asset 
um, to the program. Okay, so so again, you you want to think about um, you know um, not just how you can learn from the program, but but you also will become part of the program. You can you can also contribute to the to the program in terms of group projects or whatever other opportunities that you can reach the uh, learning experience of other uh, students as well. Uh, and finally, you know the the, the last program, you just, uh, last paragraph, you just uh, conclude and uh, try to e reiterate the main point and also uh, um, um, summarize your main arguments. Okay, so that will be um, at the end. Once you have a detailed outline for your personal statement, what you can do? Well, first of all, you need to write a detailed outline. So, based on the sample outline I just provide. And of course, you want to take into account your 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 the writing instruction, your own situation, and you write a detailed outline. And basically, you you can you can fill in the different keywords and terms, right? Once you have a detailed outline, I would encourage you, or strongly encourage you, to get as much feedback from different people as as possible. So this is a picture I took in March, you know, uh, in in Seattle uh, when I get a chance to visit the. The Facebook office in 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 Seattle. It says uh, feedback is a gift. Okay, so feedback is very important because this is how you can further improve your work. So I would um, this is my advice. Do not write your full text essay. Do not write your full text personal statement before getting feedback on your outline. Okay? As a writing teacher, I always tell my students this. You know, do not write your full text essay. Before you get feedback on your plan, because if you don't have a good plan, there's no way for you to write a good essay. So that's kind of the general message I always uh, tell my students. And I think uh, for personal statements, the same deal. Okay, try to get as much feedback on your uh, outline as possible before you write a full essay. So you should uh, get feedback from uh, at least three people. Including your language teacher, probably you can get some feedback from me, and you also want to get um, feedback from the discipline experts, your the teacher in your in your department, because um, you 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 have to ask them for uh, rec recommendation letters anyway, right? So uh, perhaps you should uh, just show them your outline for the uh, personal statement, and then have a meeting with them to to get some. Feedback, and then you can also um, maybe talk about you know the reference letter as well, okay, and also talk about your career plan. Um, I think it's more important for PhD application if if you can get a good reference letter, perhaps some recommendation from your teachers to to their friends in the uh, or colleagues in the US or, or UK that could be very helpful. Uh, I will talk about that tomorrow um, in the PhD um, uh, workshop. And perhaps you also want to show uh, this person to to a friend of, of yours from other fields, someone who do not necessarily um, have the technical background, uh, just to check and make sure that you know your your writing actually makes sense, right? So 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 again, you know the the key message here is that it's very important to get feedback at an early stage of your writing. Okay, you don't want to get feedback after you draft the whole thing, because once you draft the whole thing. What if uh, um, I read your your full essay and tell you you know it's it's not good and you have to rewrite you know it's kind of um, uh, waste of time okay so so make sure that you 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 have a good plan okay before you you commit yourself to write a full essay. I think we are going to have some follow up tutorials through Language Center. Most likely, it's going to be conducted in virtual mode. Okay, so what will happen is that. Uh, you will send me a, a summary of the master program that you are applying for, and to include the writing instructions, and also send me a detailed outline of your personal statement. And also, I would encourage you to ask some specific questions you may have about the the outline. Okay, do not ask the general question like, "What do you think of my outline?" You no, know, there's no way for me to answer that question. So, so. Well, of course, I will give you comments, but if you have any specific questions, then you can include that. If you have got feedbacks from other people, you may want to include that as well. And then I will give you feedback on your outline. 
you can revise your outline and then you can write the full text draft and send it send it to me for comments I will give you um, more details about how to sign up uh, because I, I'm still talking with the, the language center staff about you know how this will be arranged so I can get my uh, uh, teaching hours so um, um, we will we, we'll stay in touch final reminder but I think you already get this message ask not how you can get into a master program because you will get into a master program ask how the master program can help you succeed okay, so that will be sort of the key message for today uh, finally acknowledgement um, for today's workshop and then I will uh, open the floor for questions and uh, um, comments. All right, thank you.